Hello, this is Mike at Game from Scratch, and welcome to the inaugural post in the Game Dev Toolbox series. The entire idea behind this series is to introduce you to a number of different tools for game development. Right up front, this is not a review, nor is this a tutorial, so we're not going to go into an incredible amount of depth. The entire idea here is to introduce you to a program, and that's about it. And the program we're looking at today is Substance Painter by Algorithmic. Now, this guy is a PBR, or physically based rendering, based material painting solution. There is a paired product with it called Substance Designer, which can create the materials you use to paint with. We're not gonna really focus on that guy today. We're just talking about Substance Painter. Uh, Substance Painter is commercial software. Uh, it's got a split license. So if you are an indie, it is one price. If you are not an indie, it is another price. Uh, those prices are, uh, for an indie developer, it's $150 to purchase Substance Painter or 590 for a pro. Now the difference between a pro and an indie license is um, the indie developer needs to be making 100K or less a year. Um, however, and this is very cool and I hope more companies pick up this model, you can actually purchase the indie on a monthly basis. So just like you can uh, quote unquote rent Maya LT for example or Creative Cloud for uh, Adobe products for a monthly fee, you can do the same thing with Substance. And for $19.90 a month, you get Substance Painter and Substance Designer. However, and here's the cool part, after 16 months, you own it. There's no more payment. So it's basically a rent to own plan. Unlike you know uh, Maya's program or um, uh, uh, Adobe's program, at the very, very end, you own nothing. Here you actually are making purchases towards the final product. You're paying slightly more, but that seems completely fair to me. Um, so there is a price tag attached and it might be high for some people, but this is definitely a productivity tool. If you are making um, texture maps, you will save time very quickly. Um, and, or if you're like myself and very inept at making texture tools, this will actually make you look somewhat talented, which is very cool in my opinion. Now, one last thing to mention, I'm gonna mention this every time this is relevant with the Game Dev Toolbox. This is available on Steam. And the cool thing about that is Steam has sales all the time. So if this looks cool to you, make sure you keep an eye on Steam. You might be able to pick it up for a cheaper price during one of their sales. Now, this here is Substance Painter in action. Uh, this guy here is, an, is a, it's one of the included samples, but you bring in your textured model. It supports a number of formats to a varying degree of success. Um, so for example, it brings in blend files, but they never work. So I always bring things in as OBJ, but you model and unwrap in another program. This is not a modeler by any means so ever. So your, everything needs to be UV unwrapped and modeled somewhere. So then you bring it in here and this is just for painting. Now, when I say that though, it's for creating, it also creates your texture maps and your texture maps are not just, or sorry, your channels are not just like diffuse color, etc. This can do uh, metallic maps, ambient occlusion, normal maps, a lot, a lot, a lot of layers of detail can be added and baked in for you automatically as we'll see in a moment. Now, this guy is built basically from grouping layers of drawing actions together. And let me show you that in effect. So here on this side, we have our model and you've got the background that's interacting with it. We can actually change that out a bit. Um, so let me just size this out so I can actually see. So if we turn the uh, environmental blur down a bit, you can see this is the, the render effect in the background. So as we can see how the lighting is affecting our modeling, our texture, etc. And we can swap that uh, environment out for many others. Helps to actually, there we go. So you can have different backgrounds and there are a lighting effect on um, your particular model, a number of different settings available here as well. But then you built this guy off of a series of layers. If you worked in Photoshop, you get the basics of how this works. One layer works on the, the layer below it and so on and so forth. And I start turning these off. You can see the end result. So here's our uh, generated texture. Here is our final output. And I'm gonna show you something quickly before I actually go ahead and do this. This guy is showing the end result. This is the entire material, but we can show and loop through the channels we've got. And in this case, there's four channels to find. There's the base color channel, the height map, the roughness map, and the metallic map. So we can, Look at each one individually or hit M and flip back to seeing the end result. So that is, those four maps are what we were working on when we were painting. And when we've got a, when we've got a brush open, example, this guy. All right, why am I not in paint mode? You can see over here the material, the channels it's, it's affecting. 
So when we paint with this brush on this channel, we are affecting the color, the height, the rough, and the metal. So if we added an ambient occlusion channel, we could also selectively paint or not paint on it. So all these things can work across. We can either work like on the roughness, the texture, etc., or we can just work on the whole thing as a whole. And that's the cool thing where the materials come in. These materials have smart properties. I'll get back to that though. Here, let me go back to the layers here and I'll show you how these layers are interacting. So, all right, one sec. Sorry, I switched over to the, uh, the wrong texture set for a second. So you can see you can break down your texture into different things. We're working here specifically on the body, uh, not on the head, the helmet, or the shoes. Um, so back to my body, and I'm going to slowly start turning these things off. And you can see what the effects of these things working together are. So we go top layer gone, dust layer gone, sand layer gone, stitch leather gone. And you just layer these things slowly on top of each other. And that generates your end result. So we got this base gray, and then we just sort of built on it. So we added, look at his arm here, this is the skin, and we added the skin in. And then boom, it's there. And the skin probably used the skin material for the painting. And I'll, I'll, I'll look at materials in one second. Uh, but what you'll notice here is this black uh, mask over here. That is defining where um, something is going to be drawn. So that is the particular uh, area of influence. So if something is white, it's going to be affected. Black, it's not going to be affected. And you can add a new mask basically just by um, add a white mask. Or add a black mask and then you can paint the mask accordingly and that will show what underlying area is affected we can also work when we're painting or dealing with things like a mask for example uh, quickly with UV sets so I can come over here into uh, polygon fill instead in theory why am I disabled yeah let me turn everything back on oh I'm in the wrong mode all right Everything back on, turn this layer back on, and I can come in here. So this is the top layer, it's it's empty, it's got nothing in it. So that's the one we're going to play with for a bit. But I can come in here, and I can define um, the, the amount that I want to uh, apply to. So let me just go in here, and I'll show you what I mean. So we don't want this layer to apply to everything. So we'll go in here and start with a black mask, so it applies to absolutely nothing. So this top layer does nothing now. And we can just go in here, let's go back to... Polygon set with that set, go to UV islands, and we will say, uh, what are we gonna work on? Yeah, we'll just do his arm. Come on, click, UV, uh, there we go. So now it's just picked that UV set. You can see here now, uh, we've got the white mask now. So whatever we do in this channel here will only affect that area. And now let's go ahead and just do a paint. So we'll add a, a paint layer on, and now you can see some of the brushes in action. So we're only affecting the hand now. Let's turn, let's turn that off, go back to paint. All right, so now we're only affecting the hands. Uh, we've probably munched up the earlier map, but now we can play around a little bit with the materials. Now the materials are built in and have a number of uh, defined characteristics. We're gonna go ahead and make this guy out of gold now, as opposed to, um, uh, skin. So he's our new Midas. I'm just going to zoom in for a second here and we'll just paint some gold on him. And that is the effect. So you see it's it's confined to that particular mask. And I can also paint the 2D layer if we wish. Now the cool thing is this goal that I'm working with is actually got a number of properties we can set based off of actually being gold. And you'll notice as you switch through different materials, so here we got this metal plate it's got a different set of properties available to it. So you can really quickly, really rapidly um, add a lot of functionality this way. Now the neat thing is I could also go in and say, um, let's add a brick. So now we're painting with brick, but what I'm gonna do is go to our, uh, our channels for this guy and we don't want to affect the base color. Uh, actually, we'll just paint the normals with the brick. All right, so that should do it. So now we're painting just one channel. So, and you're, you're, you're just really affecting the normal map by doing so. Now, I should have actually done it, my bad. Let's do it with height. I wonder if I can quickly undo that. Yeah, let's undo that quickly. Yeah, so we're just affecting the height channel now, and there's the end result. So you can work on particular channels, or you can work on the whole thing as a whole. You're using these um, programmatically defined uh, materials to quickly do these things. Now, the cool part is on top of that, um, we've got much more complicated brushes available. So let's say, for example, we wanted to work with, 
um, card paint, red card paint. And now instead of this this munch job I've done over here, I'm going to go here and use a liquid stream. And this is going to be particle effects. So I'll do a burn instead. Um, and now this is actually going to paint with particle systems as opposed to, uh, and you can control them here. Where did it go? Uh, flow and size. So you can control it up here. And I'm just going to go here now and boom, particles being shot in. And I've done a quick burn added to our surface. So there are a number of these. We can also have it a leak from above and then the effects of the liquid draining down or we can have lasers and it's not going to do much because my colors already match so let me just switch that guy out quickly actually it doesn't really matter I'm not adding thing at that point so that is substance painter in a nutshell it's a texture painting application that manages whole lot of complexity for you. You basically just layer your textures out of materials, um, layer masks on top, draw more things, and then we didn't even touch on things like generators, which are things like adding um, dirt across the layer, or um, we've got procedurals, um, and then and here we also have filters, such as uh, adding blurs, etc., that can be applied. So there's a whole lot of complexity that can be um, just layered in, layered in, layered in, layered in. And by adding all these various layers, you create a very complex result, but it doesn't actually take nearly as long as it seems like. Um, finally, when you're done, and the key here is, this is about game developers, so what are you going to do with this when you're finished? This is where Algorithmic really rocks. Is they've made deals with just about every single major game engine out there right now. The uh, uh, Unity, Unreal, and CryEngine. Those three all support um, PBR-based export from Substance Painter and Designer out of the box. So all of this you see here is available there. All these maps are available there. Now, you, sometimes you'll find that you go to a project uh, such as Unity 4 or Blender where there isn't full support for all of the maps. And what you do then, and how do we get this stuff out of here? If we just go ahead and we export our textures. And here you pick what kind of textures you want to export. So let's say we'll go with Unity 4. And then what this is going to do for our body, for example, is it's going to export a diffuse map a normal map and a diffuse illumination map. So those work in that particular um, package. Whereas if we went to Unity 5, you'll see we now have a metallic map and emission maps being it. So it will export a set of textures baked in that are compatible with the ultimate ex with the ultimate tool you've got going. Or you can create your own custom version and determine how things are baked and exported. Now of course, I am only scratching the barest surface of what Substance Painter can do here. And I've only even mentioned Substance Designer. But I hope I gave you a good enough impression of what this tool is capable of doing. Um, you can honestly create very complicated, very cool texture maps with not a ton of artistic ability. And if you do have artistic ability, uh, this is a force multiplier. So if you can afford it and you're doing a lot of texture mapping, you certainly should consider checking out Substance Painter. Uh, if there's a lot of interest in this, you want to see more coverage, let me know in the comments. I can probably go into a bit more detail. Uh, but that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed that. See you later. Bye.